Hey everybody, welcome to the Syndicast. This week's show is brought to you by Atlas Gunworks. That's atlasgunworks.com. So uh, my next guest on the podcast is actually a, not only a guest, but a client and a good friend. This is Adam Weber from Weber Tactical. Hey, Adam. Hey, Mark. How are you, bud? You know what? I'm really good, and uh, I think it's been way too long that it took us too long to get this call organized. Uh, that's what it really comes <laughs> down to. But um, there's a certain amount of just like uh, the two of us are busy guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it never stops, does it? So. It never it never stops. It's always going. So, um, look, uh, I I wanted to get you on the cast and talk a little bit. I mean, you are one of the um, great, you know, currently small companies that supports the sport. You know, you guys are all over, it, and you have really been for years now. But Correct. Um, I think just for the listeners' context, let's talk a little bit about how Weber Tactical even started. Like. You know, maybe even go back. Like, when did you? What's your story? How did you get into shooting, competition shooting, and then create this amazing company? So there I was. It was a day like any other. <laughs> um, no, uh, so it's actually kind of a, a really funny but cool story. So Weber Tactical came about. Um, go all the way back to 2010. So you kind of have the onset. 2011, I would dub the year of Kydex where you really kind of saw more of, uh, we'll call it the garage shop uh, Kydex type places um, becoming available. Um, Index fasteners was, you know, agreeing to sell smaller quantities than, you know, buying 5,000 or something, you know, of a screw at a time and and think companies like nice kits were coming out. So I bought, I was a deputy sheriff at the time um, and I bought a, Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380, and it came with a built, uh, built-in laser mm. and could not find a holster for it. I wanted a little, you know, summer carry gun, uh, something I could throw on my ankle, um, never have been a big fan of the revolver. So yeah. I bought this gun, and, uh, you know, lasers can be for lazy shooters, and I definitely wasn't one of those. But if you're going to have a gun with a laser, it might as well work, right? right so, for sure. What I found... What I found is with all the leather ones, I was walking around and somebody would be like, um, sir, there's a red dot on the floor next to your foot. Huh? And it's like, oh man, uh, that's awkward. Um, <laughs> so I bought a, I bought a Kydex holster, um, from a guy that, um, I don't even know if he had a brand. It was a local guy. And one of the gun shops told me about this guy that was dabbling in this material called Kydex. So I paid like 65, 70 bucks for it. Um, and I got this Kydex holster that was like six inches wide. And mind you, this is a, like a two inch, you know, wide and it's widest point little Smith and Wesson bodyguard. Yeah, totally. I got this like six inch wide, uh, you know, holster with some handmade belt loops. And I mean, it was just this massive thing. And it, I really liked how the gun, you know, kind of snapped in it. And I was like, wow, this is, a cool concept, but poorly executed. Yeah, um, really great. And, part. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh. Right. Um, but so I was like, you know what? So I started doing a little research on this material called Kydex, um, uh, found, you know, some videos here and there. This was the days of the toaster oven, you know, and people are heating uh, chunks of Kydex in the toaster oven. And uh, so I was like, you know what? I got an extra toaster oven and I got some stuff. So I went to Walmart and I bought two boat seats. Cause I heard that boat seats had like neoprene. The foam was okay. Cause okay. I had no idea where to buy like foam to press. So oh, right. this, is, that, got, this I, is the pad part that goes over the top, right? To press everything. Right. Down. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Yeah. That back in the day, you know, that's what, that's how you're making holsters is you're, you know, compressing it with like this pad. So I didn't know what they were using. So I went to Walmart and bought a couple of boat seats. So after I melted some boat seats on, on some Kydex, I finally figured <laughs> out that that's not, you know, really, really what you're trying to do. So anyway, awesome. I got some foam and, and I started playing. Um, yep. And, you know, I went and bought, there was a, like a, 
uh, used tool store down the road and I bought this, uh, have you ever seen like a handheld belt sander? Yeah. Like, you know, if I like stand on a table or whatever. So I bought that and then I bought bolts and I flipped it over and I put holes through it and I mounted it to a board so I could have a table sander. Um, and I mean, it was just, it was crazy. Uh, so I started now, playing. This was all and, down in the basement of your house at this point, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Got it. All right. Yeah. On, on like a six foot plastic table. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh so yeah i mean it was just uh i think people I should know I've, I've i've been in that basement and it is ultimately <laughs> incredibly glamorous it is incredibly yeah. glamorous yes so yeah i mean uh so i started playing and you know i mean man looking back now like i would pay somebody and i'm just joking but i would like I would, I don't even want to ever see those holsters again, but I mean, back in the day, you know, I thought, man, these are really cool, you know? And uh, so that was back before you could buy belt loops, you know, you were having to hand make your belt loops and, you know, they would break every few months and, Mm. but you know, we got good at some stuff, um, started playing. So fast forward to 2012, um, and I got hurt, uh, pretty bad on the job and was out for, oh man, six, seven months. Uh, physical therapy, surgery, blew a shoulder out. And um, so I just started a little Facebook page. um, And back then we were actually called Bulldog Holsters. Um, My name as a deputy was Bulldog. That's what everybody on the street called me. And um, so, uh, you know, we played around with that for a little while. And then um, this Facebook page grew and like a couple gun stores called me and they wanted to start carrying products like consignment and, um, you know, I just had some free time on my hands. So I was making holsters and, you know, the next thing I knew, uh, you know, like this thing just started evolving. Um, and so I started looking at it and kind of, you know, going, okay, well, it's, if anybody out there has anything called bulldog, it's nearly impossible to call anything bulldog and get any kind of brand recognition. Like it, yeah. it's, it's, you know, every other, you know, town has a, a high school team with the bulldog. So, um, so anyway, we, we decided to change to Weber Tactical. We incorporated in 2014 and decided to, we had some, uh, we acquired some pretty big online retailers at that point. Mm-hmm. And we started going from, you know, five or 10 holsters a week to, you know, five or 10 holsters a day. Um, and just started, it just kind of became a thing. And, um, so in the process of all that, um, in 2012, before I got hurt, I was a deputy working nights and, um, there was this guy. At, so the only thing open overnight for us to eat at was a Denny's in Kingdom city, Missouri. And there was this trucker that would always be in there at like three o'clock in the morning. It was kind of our time, you know, things had wound down and we go in there to eat. And it seemed like he'd always try to sit a little bit closer and, you know, he'd always smile and wave. And finally one day I just said, I said, Hey man, why don't you come over here and have dinner with us? Like you're here every night. And yeah. He'd be on his laptop and he introduced himself. His name was Billy. Um, and, uh, he's like, man, he's like, I just appreciate you guys. And he's like, Hey, do you guys shoot any pistol competition? And I was like, well, I don't like to shoot, but no, I've never tried any pistol competitions. He's like, well, I shoot this IDPA match every month. every at Green Valley Sportsman's Club in Columbia. He's like, you got to come over. And I'm like, well, I don't know, you know, and, and uh, he's like, no, seriously, your gun, what guns do you have? You know, you can, you can shoot in your duty gear and, and it's a lot of fun. And so after about a month of Billy hounding me, I finally went over and shot an IDPA match and I had a lot of fun actually. Um, you know, people were a little standoffish because I was a policeman at first, which was kind of, you know, interesting. And, yeah. you know, everybody's trying to watch the cop, right? Is the cop going to shoot the, the hostage, you know? And, if, and as a cop, if you shoot a hostage, you never live it down. Like it just... <laughs> you know, it just, you just never live it down, you know, in a 90 pay match. So anyway, long story short, we, uh, I started shooting pistol and then, um, you know, the company was growing and we started, I started hearing about this thing called three gun. And I was like, well, oh, I like rifles and I like shotguns mm-hmm. and I like pistols. And I like to run around and shoot stuff. So this sounds like it's right up my alley. So, um, I got into, at that point I met Corinne Mosier. Um, and I, I like to tease her. I knew Corinne before she was, when she was just a normal human being, um, mm. before she evolved into the shield maiden and, shield maiden. and, uh, <laughs> you know, all that. So, uh, but anyway, I got her and Mark McSorley and, oh, uh, sure. later Dylan Easley, 
um, you know, introduced me to this three gun thing. So four years ago, I decided to go over to shoot for the gold. It was their first match. Mm. Um, Mark McSorley talked me into it. Um, you know, I bought a shotgun and started, you know, looking at all this sort of stuff. And, and, um, so I went and shot a match and I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and it was from that match. I watched a guy on the first stage, um, of that day. Um, really nice dude. I felt really bad for him. Um, he caught his pistol on a rifle and dropped, hit the ground first stage. He was like the second or third shooter of the day and he was DQ'd. And I was like, wow, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there's something here that needs to happen. And mm. I felt really bad because, you know, when you DQ, you know, and I'm still, I was still learning at this point, right? I was like, oh man, what happens now? And they're like, oh, well, he's done. I was like, does he get refunded? And they're like, nah, if you DQ, like you're done, like it's over, you know? And so uh, I was like, well, man, that really sucks. Somebody ought to build a holster that could, you know, maybe help from that, prevent that. And right. so um, I started talking to Dylan those guys. And I was like, you know what? I think we could do this. And so then we came up with, um, we came up with a good design, started playing with it. Um, you know, and it just kind of evolved, uh, from there as a company, you know, we were making a lot of CCW holsters back in the day. That was kind of our, you know, as a policeman, you know, we were making a lot of from my buddies and stuff like that. And then we got into the competition stuff and, um, quickly found that, you know, the CCW market, there was a lot of guys making holsters. I mean, there still is. I mean, uh, there's just so many guys in that, in that knit, you know, that, that market share. Yeah. Uh, but competition was lacking, especially in three gun. And so, uh, you know, from that we developed the dual air, you know, we actually had, uh, Karen Mosier broke a holster mm. and it, it like cracked the Tidex and everything. And, and she sent it to me and she was demoing it and she was like, I broke it. And I was like, okay. So we started talking about it. So that's, we developed the double layer from there. Um, you know, I have no idea if I'm the first one to use the double layer or not, but yep. we've been doing it for a long time. Yep. Um, and you know, you can't beat the strength of it. Um, and that's where we got into that. And we started looking at three gun. Of course, then we evolved into, you know, hoods and we evolved into magazine pouches. I watched people start, you know, uh, having a, a yard sale of magazines on stages. And I was like, man, we need to build a better, you know, and I, and I'm pretty sure my first mag pouch was like a Phobos, right? Like, right. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. know, oh, you man. know, with no adjustment and, and, you know, like I remember running and putting my hand on my pistol and my hand on my mags and oh, thinking, I, uh, man, I don't even, I, I got so, <laughs> I got so lucky. I, and I tell, I've told this story more than once, but I, I got online, I figured out everything I needed. This is before your story even starts, right? So there's right. even less information out there, you know? And I like called this. I, I found this company and I ordered this stuff online. And the next day, the guy calls me up, and it, it, this turns out to be somebody who I've known for a long time now. And he calls me up. His name's Ron Westberg, and he calls me up and he goes, "Hey, is this Mark?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "You don't want anything you ordered." <laughs> <laughs> and I had got like the oh. Black Hawk like four by four, where you have the two mags over the right. two mags, and because I was, <laughs> oh my god. He ended up, I mean, it, that that whole thing cost him like twenty bucks. I mean, he made made more money letting me like hang right. myself, but he didn't do it. Right. So that's funny. Well, yeah, it's you know, and I gotta tell you, like from the very beginning, you know, and I preach this loud and proud very, a lot. The shooting community is the best community. Totally. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, especially you know, I'm very partial to the the three gun. Um, community, I haven't played a lot in the USPSA game. Like I've never, I don't think I've ever been classified or anything like that. It's just not, it's not something that I've ever really played in a whole lot. I kind of pretty much dove into the three gun world. And, you know, so not to say that those guys aren't the best, but I, I just have never met people, you know, that will hand you more and go, Hey, listen, if you really want to have this, you can buy it, but you're going to waste your money. Yeah. And, you know, um, heck I shot a match this year with, and I didn't shoot a single gun that I owned. Hmm. Like I, I, I decided at 3 a.m. I was going to go shoot this local match in the Midwest Point Series. And I got there and I had a pistol go down and I had borrowed a shotgun and I had borrowed a rifle from Dylan. And I literally had nothing together. And, and I was just like, oh, let's just go shoot. And, you know, these guys were like, hey, here, just, you know, use yeah. this. And blah. <laughs> yep. so, um but you know the the evolution of the sport, the evolution of the gear, 
um, it fascinates me because, um, you know, I look back, I, you know, there are guys, and I think even yourself have been in this game, this three game game. You know, I think of like the greats, like Patrick Kelly and, you know, of course, Jerry and all those guys, they've been around this and watched the, you know, the sport evolve and the gear evolve and, you know, you never know you need something until you figure out that it's broke. No, you know? totally. Um, well, look, I mean, those guys started playing this game when it was Soldier of Fortune magazine, right? You know? Right. And it was right. like, you know, you had like the street sweeper shotgun and, you know, and, and uh, your Colt AR and whatever, right? I mean, it was like totally not even the same thing. Um, right. No, I, got, yeah. I, got, I got in the, t- the last year that people were still using traditional caddies for shotgun. Is that like the underhand load with the thumb and all yeah, that? Yeah, like so the, my first four, season, okay. my first season, people were still there. wasn't anything. There was no such thing as a dual load at that time. It was right. that first season, and then by the second season, all of a sudden, Tacom was showing off those. The I mean, literally, they were like broom clips, right? I mean, literally, <laughs> right? right, right, and. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, you mean because he was sourcing that stuff from some hardware store somewhere, you know? Right. And um, and that like we were like, whoa, <laughs> like <laughs> hold on, you know? And I mean, the evolution from there has been insane. Now, you know, that's leveled out in the last couple of years. We're you know we're yeah. not seeing quite the like that whole world, but now the pistols are just getting better and better. Right. Right. You know, and and I got to tell you, like I think. You know, I see open is growing, um, and I have my speculations on that, and, you know, I'll tell you. So I think there are two reasons why open is – well, three, okay? Open pistols are really cool. That's number one, right? I mean, you can't argue with, like, a Hayes customer and Atlas or, you know, some of these open guns like Josh Josh and those guys are just – I mean, holy cow, it's fun to just watch them go that fast, right? And who doesn't like, you know, the big magazines and all that? Mm -hmm. But I think number two is – a lot of some of these guys are getting older, and I think they're going to open because the eyesight's starting to go. Uh, uh, and hey, three... don't, hey, 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 hey! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm not quite there yet. Okay, dude, I, I'm, uh, gonna, I'm not. I'm, but... gonna, I'm gonna just tell you this is just. I mean, because this is gonna be like the most like uh, like bro back of the room fucking podcast right. ever. But oh, now right. there we go. I've already put the explicit on there. All right, but right. I, no, this morning when I got up, I'm like. I, I, I try to lay in bed for a few minutes and I do a little reading. It's a little, you know, it's a little Christian thing, a little wake up thing right. I do, right? Right. And I put the book up and I'm like, I can't see any of this. And I'm thinking I'm tired <laughs> or whatever. And then I leaned over and I grabbed my glasses. I have a set of cheaters on my nightstand because at the end of the day, my eyes are a little tired, you know? So I'll stick right. them on. I put them on and all of a sudden, boom, just like I could read the whole thing. And I'm like, ah. Oh, yeah. It's not getting better. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, I gave so up. My shoot, last I gave up shooting indoors in the in the winter. Well, it, my last reason you're going to hate even more, and you want to know why that you want to know what that is. What's that? We've invested so much in training the next generation. Yep. and we're doing such an awesome job. Yep. that dudes like Tim Yackley and oh, Dick Kosick are yep. kicking everybody's ass. Oh yeah, in tech ops. So dudes yep. are like, yeah, screw that. I'm not getting beat by an 18 year old. I'm going to shoot open. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's, well, yeah. There's all that. There's all that division jumping. No, I. I look, right. I mean, we did. We, you know, the 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 first generation created the game. Right. Yep. The second generation figured out how to make it safe and palatable. My generation was responsible for really the gear race, you know. Right. And right. and then the last sort of series here, my generation plus, I guess yours, really, really brought the junior to the forefront. You know, my yeah. generation's business yeah. owners really brought that to the forefront. So now we have well trained, well educated, physically fit you know, uh, kids with the best gear the world's ever seen. Yeah, right. of course they're kicking ass. That's exactly what we wanted. Right. I've, I've been saying this for five years, though. It isn't going to be your or my ugly mug that is going to be the breakout face of shooting. It's going to be a cute, young kid, yep. probably a girl, because um, they just disarm the whole boys and their toys conversation and, the you know, the adult tyranny bullshit like that just doesn't really oh, need yeah. to be yeah, they just disarm all that right it's yeah. just about this great game and like the fun we're having and like you said the great people and all of that and so our tony hawk is going to be like a madeline stewart or uh you know right. in, insert your favorite i use her because she's one of our shooters but insert your favorite um junior female you know 15 right. 16 well-spoken good with a gun 
Dakota Overland would be another one, you know. Yep, Cheyenne Dalton. Cheyenne Dalton, you know, yeah. Cheyenne's, Cindy Rockwell. I mean, Cheyenne's insta-famous on her own, right? And I don't know if that's anything even to do with, with multi-gun. You know, she's just a... Right. She's, we'll, 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 we'll get to her. we we'll get to your sponsored shooter roster here. Right, sure. But, sure. okay, so, so now you're creating your first generation of competitive shooting gear. Right. And you got, obviously, some good friends in Dylan Easley and Corinne Mosher. You know, these are great shooters, great people. So what right. what was like what was the impetus to like take this thing cuz you know today you're no longer um you know we met somewhere in the, between where we're talking about then and now but right. there was you know you were still employed with O'Fallon PD or whatever Correct. at the time yeah so yeah. when we first met but you know you had it in your mind by the time I met you that you were on your way out so where was the decision that man this could really be a thing Well you know I there's a lot of factors, um, I think, that play into that, um, you know, be it both political climate, climate of the time to be a policeman. Um, you know, I, I think I recognized that once we started seeing, once we started creating gear and people started getting it into the hands of, you know, good competitors. And the biggest thing that really struck my attention was we were listening to this and I said by we I mean I I was listening to the shooters and we were tweaking things and guys were like guys would call me up and they'd be like hey um do you think you could do this and if you change this then you know this would happen I'd be like sure let's try it you know just tell me how it works and and dudes were like you know creating almost you know guys like Jay Carrillo you know Dylan some of these other guys you know uh were like they were getting what they wanted out of gear and I was learning yeah. and I, you know, because I was a new kid on the block and, and mm. it was like, I think the downside to some of the larger companies is they kind of lose touch with yeah. the shooters. And, you know, and so here I was trying to learn the game and trying to go into it without, you know, my goal as when I decided to start this in 2014 to incorporate and, and, you know, really go hard at it. Um, I saw that there was a need and we were filling that need successfully. And, you know, the biggest thing was, you know, I want to go have fun with my friends and I want to be safe when I do it and I want them to have fun. And so when I create this gear that, you know, these guys have got ideas, but nobody's listening to them. So if we listen to them and these ideas work, then great. If they don't, then we're back to the drawing table, like nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, um, that is really the embodiment of when we decided, you know, it was like, Hey, this is, this is really, um, you know, this is really cool. I'm having a lot of fun. And, you know, I felt like we had a good product and we had a good core of people that were given feedback on it. And I was like, man, I want to tell everybody about it. I actually made a Facebook post. Um, you know, Hey, I'm looking for a marketing firm and pass them. Um, oh, his, right. he messaged me and he was like, Hey, there's this guy named Mark Stevens with Hawkeye syndicate. And he's up here and you know, he does, this is kind of in his wheelhouse. And so I sent you an email and, you know, we just kind of communicated and then, you know, we just started working together. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and we've seen the, the growth and the evolution, so to speak, you know, I retired, um, and retired is a joke, right? Right. I yeah. throw that around. Like <laughs> I, I retired from full-time police work. Um, you know, and one of the factors of that was I saw this growing yeah. and, you know, I felt like the accessory company in the market share gun companies are always going to, they're going to have big peaks and valleys, right? Totally. So if the black rifles are cool, then they're going to make money. If they're not, they're going to hurt and, you know, vice versa. Yeah. But I really see the accessory company as being a little bit more stable, um, you know, in the highs and in the lows, people are still going to want gear. They want cool colors. You know, that was the other big thing was, I mean, holy cow. And I'm not bagging on any company, right? Like no, I'm really it. and sincerely trying, yeah. don't want to bag on anybody, but here's the deal. If you spent $4,000 on a damn pistol and you put it in a $75 black holster, what in the world is wrong with you? Yeah. Right. Uh, well, you yeah, know, no, I, mean, I got it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, totally. I, I, yeah, I've had, look, I mean, you know, I've had a lot of holsters. It's, right. Most people, I mean, most shooters have a, a drawer somewhere in their house that's like 
got about five hundred and eighty-seven dollars worth of shame in it, right? You know, oh yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, they've oh, got yeah. most definitely. And um, and so I, yeah, I, you know, I got that. It well, there is something like. Well, first of all, it's really interesting. You said I want and I want to be safe doing it. You know, like right the. I forget that a holster is a sa- is primarily a safety a piece of safety equipment. You get like yeah. the evolution has come so far that I've sort of forgotten that its primary purpose is about safety. And really, what I'm looking for is like speed and sex and like you know right. Has it like is it you know does does this make my magwa look fat? You know like is this, right right. right. <laughs> well, you know I think it's the most overlooked and undervalued piece of gear on ninety yeah. percent of shooters' belts. Yeah. So. If you look at the evolution of matches today, you know, I'm watching videos on Instagram early, earlier of the Task Force Dagger match yeah. that's going on. Well, they're dragging a dummy on a rope, yep. you know, over, and I hate to say it, but if you have an old school, you know, a USPSA front cut holster that's loose, you know, so in USPSA, basically, you want the holster to hold the gun and you want it to be as light as possible and like, when you start, you grab and you go and you shoot, right? Yep. Well, in three gun, you need to run a while before you even get the pistol out, you yeah. know, and, and, and there's that. So you need the level of retention, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know about you, but as a policeman, as a private citizen, I don't like guns being pointed at me and it sure scares the heck out of me when I see guns fall. Um, yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm sure. around, like, you I, know, um, dude, I got to tell you, I am so desensitized to it at this point. It's sad. Right. I, right. I did I did so when I sold my marketing or when I sold my my last business to the parent company, I had a whole summer of trying to figure this whole thing out with syndicate, right? Right. And I took a job. I mean, I was literally wearing like I, I mean, I had like I had suspenders that matched my pocket squares, just to give you some idea of the kind of work I was doing, right? <laughs> right. And right. So I was doing that on like Friday of one week of like the week. You know, the last Friday in June, I was wearing like the same colored suspenders and pocket square, right? And right. The following Monday, I was working behind the counter at Arms and Arms for twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> right. And right. I spent the whole I spent the whole summer with people just pointing guns at me. Right. Hey, right. what do you think about yeah. this? Hey, you think this will fit in this holster? And they like pull it out of their, you know, they're like, you think this one would fit? You know, they're pulling guns out of their pants, and I'm like, wait, wait, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, by the time yeah. you isn't get it Arms and has the jar. Of the, the yes. it's unloaded jar or whatever. The, the, it's not loaded, they said jar. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that thing has yeah. been has to get dumped out about every every fiscal quarter. <sighs> you, know, oh. you, you got guys that come in, they're like, you know, it's empty, and then you rack it, bing, one pops out, you know, or right. whatever. It's just bad. Right. You know, old like freaking uh you know, lever action rifles come in across the table and they're like, Nah, that's my grandpappy's. It's been in the garage since nineteen sixty two and <laughs> that thing hasn't had ever even been loaded. You're like <laughs> And like a brown fucking shoots out, and just kind of right, right. It goes in the jar. We keep Moment the of ammo. Truth. Uh, the, uh, the only time I've ever felt bad about keeping the ammo is this one guy. He brought in, he brought in. I don't know what he was thinking, but he brought in his pistol, and he and it was like a nice, like I don't know. Let's just say it was like a CZ Shadow, right? So he opens sure. up this like presentation box, and there's a CZ Shadow in there with four magazines, all loaded with with hollow points, and he opens it up. And to show it off, he, he puts the gun, puts a magazine, racks it, then sets it down on the table next to the presentation box. <laughs> and, and it was all meant to look really cool and like show off how right. great the system he has was. And I was just like, right. that just cost you like sixteen rounds of like you know dollar fifty hollow points. Right. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah, you know, it's the holster is. So the other flip side of this is like. Nothing in three gun is ordinary. Like everybody's no. color coded, you know, everybody's, you know, you've got their theme, you know, whether it's red and black or, you know, whatever they're, whatever yeah. they're makes them feel sexy. And, you know, I just, I, I saw that and I was like, man, you know, what if we could, what if we could, you know, take two colors and, you know, put them together and we could make this really cool, really safe holster that was smooth to draw yeah. and, you know, um, and so that's really what we set out to do, um, you know, with the help of, you know, and I 100% give the credit to the guys and the shooters, you know, giving feedback and, yeah. you know, going, Hey, this sucks, you know, let's change this or, Hey, you know, what about this? And, 
and you know, um, if it wasn't for the shooters, I'm not sure that I would have come up with these things on my own. Just, you know, um, you have to build a good crew of people around you, yeah, um, sure. in order to, you know, be successful at anything you do. It doesn't matter yeah. you know what you do in life. You have to surround yourself with, you know, uh, forward thinking, positive people, um, you know, that, that can help you with your story. Yeah. And so, you know, as you get to that, you really got to be willing to take some criticism, you know, and, and I think that's, um, that's important. You gotta, you gotta be able to admit when something sucks, you know? Yeah. Um, well, look, I mean, so, you know, let's just call it what it, it's, it's like, it's just being, it's not even that like the other companies, the big companies, if you want to call it that, I mean, I, you know, I, we're, getting, we're not pointing fingers at anybody because if it wasn't for those right. companies, a lot of us wouldn't have had the gear we needed to begin with. For sure. But, um, you can't stop being curious. No. And that's the thing no. about the three gun game too is is that game is like it's just built I mean like the equipment is come from curiosity like could I could I get right. a couple of magnets to hold two rounds so at the beginning I can go from 8 to 10 like you know I'm just right. curious you know right. or or whatever it is or like you know could I create I mean those those ANS trigger guards I mean that's a great one it's just like well these guys were all screwing around with Dremels trying to put a little scallop on their trigger guard. Well, what if we could create a really, really dope one and it would, you know, hold a trigger set better and what have you, or, or right. you know, your stuff has come like a long way. I mean, just yep. even in the last couple of years, I mean, people are going to die when they see the new stuff. <laughs> the new stuff is, um, the new stuff is the combination of everything we've learned in the last two years, really of research and development and playing and tinkering and, um, you know, reaching across to industry partners, you know, that have machining capabilities and CAD and, you know, really, you know, putting this stuff into and taking it to the next level, um, you know, in, in this. And, and, you know, one of the other things we realized is one of the reasons we've, you know, everything we make now, on the new process for the new line is all done in CAD and it's all made off of aluminum molds. It's very expensive. Um, you know, it's, it's a couple grand, you know, just to get started. And so we've invested a lot of money this year because, um, you get repeatable consistency. And so you take an STI frame, right? So an STI, uh, their width is going to come in at 0 0.900. Well, in Atlas off of Phoenix Trinity frame or, or a wider frame, uh, I don't remember if Warwick makes one as well. I'm not sure if they're using Phoenix or well, they there's make a, their there's own. A, there's a CK frame that floats around out right. there. There's, right. I mean, there's a handful of them. Yep. Yep. So, you know, those come in at anywhere from, you know, 0 0.940 to point, you know, 920. Well, that's nearly impossible to accommodate for when you're trying to wrap a piece of plastic around an aluminum resin, you know, like a poured resin gun, like you can't really accommodate for that and, and the mm. flexibility. Yeah. And so, but in CAD, I can't. Mm. So, you know, we went in and we've built all of our holsters, like our 2011 holsters will all fit, you know, any of the Phoenix Trinities, they'll fit the STI. You say, what's the difference? Well, you got to make one full rotation of the retention screw. Yep. for the STI. Yeah. So I can go, you know, I can go 40, you know, 0 0.40 and wider for the Phoenix and, you know, it fits there. And then we just shrink it down a little bit for the STI, no big deal. Yep. And so we're able to accommodate for things like that. Um, and, you know, the great attention to detail, um, you know, one of the things we found with mold guns was they break, you know, yep. um, and sometimes you catch it, sometimes you don't, you know, if a mold gun cracks and like disintegrates and, and you know, internally you don't realize until the customer calls and goes, Hey, my gun doesn't fit. And you're like, well, we've made like a hundred gun or a hundred holsters off this mold. And then you go back and you like, you take your finger and poke in the mold and you're like, Oh, there was an air bubble and it cracked and we didn't, you know, yeah, it was something that you couldn't see on the inner layer, you know, it didn't really reflect on the outside, but yeah, that's definitely why your gun doesn't fit, you know? Yeah. No. Kidding. Um, so, um, we've eliminated that, you know, we get exact consistency we get exact consistency, <laughs> you know, the old way. And man, I don't know how many thousands of holsters I've made, you know, where you, you hand measure the screw holes or, you know, you, I, and I can tell you that I can eyeball it within usually within about an eighth to a sixteenth of an Not inch. Bad. I can tell you, you know, where those need to go, but now I don't have to worry about it. It's preset in CAD. 
And, you know, um, so what that allows us to do is to increase our production. So our daily capacity quadruples and we're putting out a better product, more consistent, better for the end user. Um, you know, just, I mean, and I got to tell you, like, not to toot my own horn, but they're pretty damn sexy looking holsters. I got to tell no, you. They, I mean. they are. And I want to, I want to get into that a little bit more, but let's, let's talk about, there has been a cost. I mean, let's just be really honest here. You know, there has been a cost, uh, not just with in cash this season right. with what you're up to. And, yeah. you know, I'm looking at the site right now and our current lead times are what, eight, eight weeks. Yeah. There's people that, are, Mark, I, I, I've got people that have waited like 12 weeks for holsters. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we've got some very patient people, um, that are, you know, that have been very gracious and, you know, we've, we've gone out of our way to really try to communicate with people. Yeah. And, um, so I'll dive into that here. Yeah. Why, you know, why not? Without, let's, like, I mean, look, this is a know. show for this, you know, this is inside baseball world, right? This is like, let's, right? let's just get the, the business out on the table and let people so figure it out. When we started, when we started this, process a year ago I started I recognized that you know our capacity was quickly being overrun um and you know I can only work so many hours in the day um and you know still uh be married and you know a dad and all that sort of stuff I mean you know human beings can only do so much and you can only hire and teach so much as well yeah so I realized the need for a true process you know a manufacturing process so we started developing that we started working in the CAD uh, world, um, in the machining, um, and quickly realized that, you know, um, this is where we need to go. Um, you know, during all that time, you know, whatever happened at Blade Tech, my understanding is they got bought out. Yeah. I don't know how all that went down. I don't, you know, it's not really my business. Don't really care. Um, but they ended dealer programs. So, you know, and then their WRS hood, um, you know, is no longer available like yeah. overnight. Like, so for you know, people who aren't totally like down with holster culture, this is the, sure. the WRS. This is the retention hood that a lot of three gunners are using. This is also like tech lock, which is one of the right. fastening systems. We, we use anything else that was coming directly from blade tech at that time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, like your paddles, your tech locks, your yeah. drop offset, all that stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, all of that stuff. And so, you know, that happened. And then G code, bless their hearts. They moved buildings and they had like this massive warehouse move and they were down for, you know, three and a half months, four months. There were, you know, we found that out in like December. Uh, I think it was like December 17th. I called my supplier and I'm like, Hey, I need like 150 RTIs. And he's like, so we're out of those. And it says we won't get any until March 1st. And I'm nope. like, what? <laughs> um, so I started going online and buying them everywhere I could find. Like I talked other holster makers into selling them to me. I bought them at retail <laughs> to, oh my God. you know, just to get, just to get orders out. Because I mean, at the end of the day, here's the thing. Like nobody really cares why the Weber tactical holster didn't get there. Like yep. there's legitimate reasons, yep. but they just, they ordered, they want their stuff. They got their new toys. They want their stuff. And so, you know, people ask me like what keeps me up at night and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it really, anybody that knows me very close knows like the burden that it is on my shoulders, um, that people are waiting on me to go have fun and like do yeah. the sport, you know, and, and grow mm. to the point that I've canceled, you know, I've canceled most of my majors this year. I've tried to make it out because I still want to be out and, you know, I want to see people and, you know, be with, I want to see my friends and still try to have a little bit of fun. But, you know, other than like charity matches, um, you know, I don't have anything scheduled until August. I'm hoping to go to the, to the governor's cup in Wyoming. Like that's a really big deal. I want to get out there and support that, yep. you know, vortex, um, governor Mead. Yeah. Um, well, Magpul. so yeah, Mag, I don't know if, did you see the press release I put out today that, uh, Magpul or sorry, Vortex is now the presenting sponsor of that. So it's actually, Oh, that's awesome, the, dude. The, the, here's the, the new title is, hold on, let me get it right. <laughs> the Wyoming Magpul governor's match presented by Vortex Optics. And strategic match design. Well, that, I mean, strategic is the, <laughs> is the designer and the and the back end. Right. Yeah. No, I right. strategic max design is supposed to show up like Mad Robot. 
Gotcha. You know what you know gotcha. what I'm talking about when I say mad robot? Right. Yeah, we're yeah, we're I I yeah. I'm gonna like so, I mean I don't know if, if I have a different opinion on this than the guys who own the company do. So when I say this, I'm I'm saying this. This is my own personal opinion, but I always thought of what strategic mash design should be is like the mad robot. Like you you see the little trailer <laughs> at the beginning, and you're like, hey, what was that? And then it goes away, right. and then it's all about the movie, right? Then it's the Avengers or right. whatever. Yeah, right. and that's <laughs> that's what I that's what I I hope it someday becomes where it's so potent that you just see the little. SMD, and you're right. like, I know exactly what I'm getting, right? And then it's the Avengers, right? right? Um, and, yeah. Yeah, but that's... And, dude, I got to tell you, like, strategic match design has come out this year and just been phenomenal. Um, cool. Great, great, you know, help to the sport, um, all nice. that. I do want to get back, before we get sidetracked, like, yeah. I do oh, yeah. want to go back to the delays, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, no, sorry, I I, yeah. I don't No, you're fine. I do want to pull back because I do know this is a show that a lot of our, uh, our people listen to and, you know, our tribe. And so the deal is this is we basically realized that the 2011 game with Atlas arms, Hayes custom, you know, these different Warwick tactical is just gone insane in the last few years. Like yeah. we probably sell four to one 2011 holsters or mag pouches yeah. than we do any other, you know, Glock, anything else, yep. you know, the 2011 is just booming. And so we, the fitment and, you know, adjusting rubber spacers and all that, like I was okay sending stuff out because it was the best. We physically could not buy a mold gun that was for a Phoenix Trinity frame. But so we were sending, you know, the rubber spacers, we were doing what we could do to increase widths and things like that, but it wasn't good enough. Um, and it all goes back to, you know, my personal mission was to, you know, again, to have fun safely with my friends. And so I saw guys were loosening in their holsters. And so we started this CAD process. We jumped it way up. Um, you know, we, we, we bit, we bit hook, line and sinker invested, you know, the money, um, to get the designs done and to be able to put just a phenomenal product on the market that yep. people don't have to worry about. Now, if you've ever built a house, when you sign the paper, the contractor says, okay, well, it'll be under roof on this day and the windows will be installed by this date and, you know, have all these checkpoints, right? Well, <laughs> Uh, what happens is generally those checkpoints seldom get met yeah. unless you have just this amazing contractor. So, um, you know, what we started and thought was going to be done um, has taken longer. Now, I want to dive into that just a little bit. Um, everything, so Weber Tactical has a research and development program. So we don't put anything on the market that hasn't been tested by our pro staff, by we have people that don't necessarily shoot for us. They're not paid members of our, you know, pro staff team and they're grandmasters in USPSA. Uh, they may be Navy SEALs. They may be policemen, whatever. We send this gear out and we let them test it for, you know, 30 to 40 days. And we say, okay, does it pass before we ever bring anything up? So what happened is we had them, we had what we thought was a, you know, a final design, we were pretty happy about it. Um, you know, we were able to secure the new technology in the retention device, um, you know, that we had been working on, which is a new hooded holster to replace the, the WRS. Uh, we have just a phenomenal hood that we've come out with. Yeah, it's um, like I used it. The other, I used it Wednesday for the first time. To uh, was it? This is Friday, right? Yeah. So two nights ago. Right. It's ridiculous. Yes. I got. I want to put it, another plug in here in a second too about what I would sure. do if I were everybody else. But you, you keep going. Okay. So, uh, on that note, Dylan Easley, who's not known for running a retention holster, like absolutely doesn't want a retention holster. I talked him into using it and he went, he was like, he called me. He's like, this thing's good. He's like, it took a little technique change, but this thing's good. And he went to Hornady after two weeks of playing three weeks of playing with like his final version yeah. and won and, you know, and won the match. Yep. Um, so you know, uh, that the proof is in the pudding as my grandma used to say, you know, Yep. Um, and, and so what happened is, um, we started testing and we thought we had the final revisions and, uh, we sent the holster out to, um, uh, a Navy SEAL and, um, he came, he's a really big USPSA shooter and he came back and he goes, Adam, this is wrong. And so he actually came out here to Missouri. He was teaching class. He, 
he came out a day early. We went Freddie to the Ruiz? Race. Yeah, yeah, nice. Freddie. Um, so I'm not blaming. It's not Freddie's fault. Like Freddie, no. when you listen to this, I'm not blaming you, bro. No. Um, but he came out. Well, a you day asked early him to do and, this to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. And so you know, he came out a day. Flew out, you know, early, and uh, we went to the range um, and spent several hours on the range. And he showed me exactly what he's talking about. And when you get into, if you've ever studied any of the Ron Avery uh, Tactical Performance Center, um, those guys, when you get into the biometrics of the draw and hand placement and proper grip, and you really wrap your head around that, what most people don't realize is the grip, you know, is everybody knows grip is important. But what most people don't think about is that how the holster hangs and the, the, the degree of offsets and can't determines where your hand ends up when you draw the pistol. So your hand, if your hand has to move around and you have to readjust your grip, well, there's time on the clock, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're, you're basically starting off from a losing point of view because you're not getting that proper grip. Yeah. And so Fred came back, we started working on, you know, biomechanics of the draw, things like that. And, and he was right. Um, so um, with great pain, I sent out an email. I, you know, I sent the email to you and I was like, Hey, send this to everybody. And I think you about had a heart attack. Yeah. And I was like, uh, guess what guys, we got to recut, you know, we got to recut all these molds, finish the, you know, work on the designs. We got to, you know, we got to change this and then we got to test it. Um, you know, but all of that to say, you know, that's, we, we were down for, um, a solid 45 days of trying to get this. I actually packed my press up and Kydex and got on a plane to flew to the East coast out in Baltimore to the tooling company that we work with and was at invaded his shop for three, four days and literally 18 hours a day, we would test and cut and I'd make a holster and we tested until we got it right. Um, and then well, so so these are the guys that are designing are, the jigging and everything for the, for the ongoing process of making holsters. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they're the guys that come up with the final mold, okay. which we use uh, full aluminum. So, um, you know, it's a it's a full aluminum mold, so set in CAD. And, and, you know, the cool thing is with the technology, and, you know, you talk about 3Gun being innovative, and, you know, we wanted to continue that. That's, you know, that's really where holster making is going. Yep. And I think that's what's going to separate us from a lot of other people is, you know, we've really bit into this thing um, hard, and we've invested a lot of money. And, you know, we've listened to the shooters, we've done this. And so um, the new Weber tactical gear that comes out, not only do you have a phenomenal hood that doesn't hurt your grip, it doesn't cause you to like have to push in and then roll your hand over. Um, you know, you're going to drive straight down on that gun and the hood is going to naturally go forward. It's not spring activated, but it's going to naturally go forward. And when you're done, your hand, the, the web of your hand is perfectly aligned with your arm and you come straight up out of the holster like lightning and you're ready to go. Your thumb's on top of the safety. I mean, you're just, I'm not going to say we can't do anything better, but if we can, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, no, it's good. You know. It is good. I, I, so here's the thing that I discovered. So Wednesday night, and this is like, basically I just shot pistol for this whole match. So we, you know, we host a, right. you know, a three night, a three stage match and um and it's UML rules and small you know in bays so I mean honestly that's Hawkeye at night right it's, yeah it's the ignite stuff okay. so the sure. and and so I took you know I do a lot of T and E up there it's a big part of why we did it right. in the first place. So I had both I brought the gun up but I had the little USPSA uh you know uh slide cozy <laughs> that you said as well. Correct. Really because that's all the thing is it's just I mean it's just right. only the legal parts, right? Right, and, right. Um, and and it, it 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 protects me from if I sit down with my my gun holstered, I'm not going to ding up my muzzle. That's pretty much all it does. Right. right? So right. I I had it with me, and I'm like, well, God, you know, if I'm going to pistol start, why would I put the whole big holster on, right? So I just slapped right. on the little USPSA holster, put my gun in there, and that thing, you know, I did. I I put um, a little an extra uh, spacer, a little really fine one in there, so I could make it just right. so there is no pop anymore. 
Right. You know, there's, there's literally nothing. I mean, it's just the guns just <laughs> sitting in there, right? And, uh, right. And uh, so if I have a pistol start now, I and, and really, it's the size of like, uh, well, I mean, how what is that thing? It's it's the size of like half a pack of cigarettes or something like that, or like a you know, yeah, probably a little bit, a little yeah, bigger than that or whatever. That. It's wider than that, or it looks kind of like a big, like it looks like one of those like rechargeable batteries for your iPhone or whatever yep. that you carry. Exactly. With you. Yeah. And so I'm like, God, this thing that I can totally stow this in my in my box without even thinking about it, right? Right. And I ended up using it. I ended up I ended up using it for two stages, and I'm like, I mean, the buzzer goes off and the gun just comes flying out right because there's nothing to stop mm-hmm. it and then right um and then the third stage i did end up um it was shotgun and then pistol so i put the other one on um you know i could have thumb screwed down the uspsa holster for this but what, what i'm getting at is for those of you who are really like you know if you're a gear whore like i am um right you know, I'm because I'm not even competitive anymore. And I'm shooting like you know Atlas and Obsidian, and I've got Weber Tactical. You know, I've got a lot of nice stuff, right? right? And um, and the um, I I gotta tell you for what I don't know what the extra cost is going to be to add that to like a three gun package, but like there should be like the the three gun plus. Because <laughs> no, because I mean in theory, if for the, the three plus right? the three the three G plus package, which I'm pitching to you on the air right now. Right, the 3G right. Plus package, which is basically it's what is that? So it's three pistol magazine holders, the right. the USPSA, you know, one um, uh, rifle mag holder probably should be two, right. the three gun plus, but right. you know, whatever, and then the 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 full retention holster, and then the USPSA holster, and and whatever drop off set, you, which I'm not going to take that out of the bag today unless you want to. Um, you know, all there that, all are there that. Are absolutely amazing things out there that are about to come out. <laughs> uh-huh. And if you watch Dylan Easley's video, you might get a glimpse of it. Yeah, watch, watch find Dylan Easley's video from the, <laughs> the um, from Task Force Dagger. From Task Force <laughs> Dagger, you'll be able to see some of this new stuff. But anyway, the like you get that whole kit, you know, it's going to be like five, five fifty or something like that, you right. know, but you would never need another holster. Right. You know, as long right. as you don't switch guns. I mean, this would last you forever. You could play any game you wanted. So anyway, just throwing out there, three gun plus, you, you mull it around. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that, that you're just making more work for yourself, right? <laughs> I'm totally aware that I just made more work for myself. Yeah, because it doesn't change anything for you at all. I just no. have to add a whole other product. Yeah, I got it. Okay, right. well, so we'll be working on the site, though, coming up. But let's – okay, yeah. so – Look, the truth is, it's been a really shitty couple of months. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, and it's, and it's, production wise, yeah. Yeah. It and and as, it, as it relates to the customer, they got they got the raw deal on that, and we're gonna get that straightened out, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we're working very hard at that. Yeah. Um, you know, we've tried to communicate as best we can. Yep. Um, I do want to say, you know, for those listening, if you say, "Well, I have an order and I haven't gotten communicated with." I'm not sure that's good English, but um, you can edit that out later. Um, but uh, uh, check your spam folder. We have been hearing that like the info at Weber Tactical has been getting spammed by yeah. some filters. Yeah, so, I, I hate um, to say it, but I know. think I think info has got to go at this point. We got to switch yeah. that to something else, like shoot at or something like that. So because right. that the that info it's probably gotten picked up by spam. You're 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 a big enough company now that you're going to start seeing stuff like that. So yeah. All so. Right. I want to address something that you brought up. Yeah. That's a really good point. There is no such thing. And let me be abundantly clear about this. There is no such thing as a three gun USPSA holster. Yep. Like it is impossible, right? So yeah. you're going to sacrifice one or the other. Yep. So what we have determined is that you can have the best USPSA holster, like what you're talking about. Yeah. And you can have the best three gun holster, but guys call me all the time. Uh, you know, I get emails all the time. I shoot three gun and I shoot USPSA. I want one holster that does everything. Yeah. Well, you want retention for most three gun and you want absolutely nothing for USPSA. So did the, the two worlds don't collide there. Yeah. And anybody that tells you that a front cut holster where the ejection port is uncovered and there's no support up above and nothing to keep you from snagging the gun and picking it up and out of there. They tell you that's a three gun holster. They don't know three gun. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, so I just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you've got to have some extra protection yep. uh, on that gun, especially, I mean, can you go to a match 
that doesn't have a swing involved anymore. Like, holy cow. Yeah, well, there, um, look, there are, I mean, if you, there are some classic matches that, um, well, look, I mean, let's just like, like a three gun nation, uh, you know, a Bay match. Okay. You know, and like, like when they came up here and they do at the Forest Lake Sportsman's Club where there's like one kind of terrainish or two terrainish areas and the other six or eight stages are all in our, our competition bays. I mean, the truth right. is there. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, the USPSA holster is actually appropriate. Sure, sure. Um, but if you're me and you go down to Vortex Presents in Texas, or you like, <laughs> I still, I still sneak away in October to go to Blue Ridge. I hardly ever, I don't bring cameras. I just go and do it, right? Right. And because right. um, I just, I like to get dirty when I play the three guns, right? That's the, right. What I'm into it today for is honestly, it's the the community, the people. Um, you know, frankly, I I have to be good enough that my my opinion still is valid. You know, sure. Um, I sure. can't, you know, but uh, but really, other than that, I just want to go get dirty and I want to like fast rope out of like tobacco barns and like that's the stuff <laughs> right. that like I still like to do. As long as my body will do it, I'll do it, right? Right. And I go through a fair amount of physical pain every week to make sure my body will deal with it, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not giving that up just yet, you know? I might, <laughs> right, right. I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be blind and with a cane before I'll go to open class. So next year? I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, every once in a while, even blindfolded, oh, I make one. <laughs> He's just a zinger. Okay, so we we got that. There's so much going on, um, and we got we've already believe it or not, we've been talking for an hour, which is crazy. But I want to I want to circle around real quick, and I, I'm I got your shooter page up right now. Yes, sir. And I want to just really quickly go through here, and I'm going to do it in kind of a weird order. So okay, all right, so. The OGs, sure. Jay, Jay Carrillo, Dylan Easley, Mark Godey, Mark McSorley, and Adam Weber. That's the OG team. Except, sorry, except for and then there's Corinne. Correct. And and Cheyenne has always been in like she she's always been an incredible contribution to this company without really. Right. Asking for a damn thing. I don't, you know, you're pretty lucky right. there. Is she an OG, right. though? I can't remember if she was in the original. Um, she came around, yeah, pretty early um, pretty early on. Um, she had a different holster company sponsorship when I first met her. Yeah. And um, then, so I think it was probably the second year um, that she came on board with us um, and, and has been with us ever since. Yeah, okay. Got it. So... Tell me about this group. How did this group come to be? Because, I mean, really, you ended up with a pretty serious roster of shooters. Now, I mean, that's not including who we've added this year, but, like, right? how did this come to be, and what's your relationship with these guys, and how do you, you know, how do you look at the sponsorship equation? So, uh, Mark McSorley is the angry suburban dad. Um, <laughs> we love him. He's like that crazy uncle. We love him. He has really... He's a meme king. If you don't know the dude, don't ever give him your cell phone number because the memes will just flow. Um, and, and I swear somewhere he's got like a, a big metal building full of memes stored. Um, but uh, no, so Mark um, pestered me. Mark won a gift certificate that I had donated to a match, a charity match. Uh, Missouri three gun match is where it was. Uh, so not a charity match. Uh, it was the, like one of the first Missouri three gun championships. Mm. And, um, so I had donated that. I ended up having surgery, um, that and the, wasn't the, able the, to go. That sorry. Was, that's at lead farm. That right. So yeah. that, or not yeah. lead farm. That's the, uh, tooth and nail armory championship. Tooth right? and nail lead farm. Same thing. Lead farm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cause yep. originally it was the CMG, CMMG Missouri three guy championship. Okay. I just, so just so you know, my, there's an OG, time. there's a pre OG here that you're unaware of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, um, you got a couple years on me, so I mean, man, you're just going to keep throwing this up. I mean, come on, dude. I'm really trying to be nice. <laughs> you are. All right. So McSorley, angry suburban dad, carry on. Yeah. So, uh, he called me, he won this gift certificate and he's like, Hey, I got this, uh, rock Island 2011 and I need a holster for it. And I was like, okay, I'm unfamiliar with this. So he sent me the dimensions and I, attempted to block up a 1911 and with some tape and some aluminum and like make this holster for him. And I sent it to him and he's like, I can't believe you did this off of what I sent you dimensionally. 
it's not perfect, but it actually works. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he invited me down to this Kansas city match. Um, and so in the process of all that, he introduced me to Dylan easily mm. before that match. And so I met Dylan and, um, you know, these guys just, I mean, they were like drug dealers, right? Like they just, they gave me my first taste of all this stuff. And then they're like, Oh, by the way, you need to buy this and this, and this. And, you know, um, the next thing you know, I have a habit and, you know, um, but I had never met people that were as, um, like they were competitors, but they were trying to help me succeed. Yeah. And that's something you don't see in a lot of sports. Like, you know, everybody has this, you know, hi, my name's Jimmy. I'll take all you give me attitude. Mm. And that wasn't the case with those guys. And I asked some of the absolute stupidest questions about, you know, I mean, the first thing I did was go out and buy a JM nine thirty. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, got laughed at by it ran and, you know, they helped me through it. They gave me a little grief when it didn't run, but, um, you know, um, and, and so they did those things and, but they were kind to me. Dude, I'm going to tell and, you the first 400 rounds out of my JM 930 were the smoothest, softest kitty purring rounds that ever came out of a shotgun. <laughs> 401 on was a goddamn nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I I had good luck with mine. Uh, I bought it used, and and somebody had worked a lot of the kinks out. Yeah, Uh, It wouldn't shoot slugs very well, but other than that, it it wasn't a terrible gun. Um, And it's still out there on the the three-gun circuit. Um, Somebody's still shooting it somewhere. Um, But those guys were kind to me. And so um, as we progressed, um, you know, I approached Dylan. And I said, Hey, you know, I own this little holster company and, you know, we're nothing special. I'm just a cop making holsters, but you know, I see that you're really good and I want to learn to be good. And I want to, I see that you're having, you know, you're losing mags and you're having issues. So I want to make something to fix your problem. And Hmm. he was like, Hmm, okay. So I made something that fixed his problem and I haven't been able to get rid of him since. No, Uh... Um, (laughs) but no, uh, Dylan is a good, good yeah. friend. He's a good dude, um, and, a great shooter, and a smart guy, yep. too. Yeah, he would be a yeah. really good partner to have for your curiosity. So I got, I went to Shoot for the Gold, and it was in May, and then I signed up for this Generation 3 gun, and somebody got me into this Generation 3 gun thing, mm-hmm. and I went down to that. And so in between all of that, uh, I met Dylan. I met Corinne at a Rob Vogel class yeah. in Kansas, over in Kansas City, uh, met her, and, um, she was, you know, just really getting started into, into shooting. And, and so, you know, all of these people, I picked them up and, and, you know, Mark and, you know, obviously Dylan has just evolved into the sport. You know, Mark is, um, he's shooting a lot with his kids now, so he's not shooting probably quite as many majors on the three gun circuit. Um, so, but as far as brand ambassadors, first and foremost, like those, those OGs, uh, Mark Goaty, he's an IDPA area director. Well, IDPA is where I started, and Mark answered a lot of really stupid questions about the rules for me mm-hmm. that I had, and he was always kind to me. And so these are people that helped me in the sport, and in return, like, you can't forget where you come from, right? Oh, like, right, I don't care totally. who you are, you know, you can't forget where you come from, um, you know, and and things like that. And so um, we picked those guys because they were good shooters, they were professional on, you know, they didn't have a bad stage and break, you know, throw a magazine in the woods, um, you know, or, you know, throw a shotgun, you know, in the back of a truck, like, you know, they're trying to drive a spear or something, you know, if something broke, like they, they were professional, they were kind. I watched how they interacted with other people and I was like, well, I want to see this sport grow. I want my kids to be able to have this sport when they're old enough to shoot if they choose to. And so these are the guys I want to partner with. And so then the next, um, so then that fall, Mark again, talked me into, he's like, come down and stay at my house. There's this match in Rala. It's a USPSA match, multi-gun match. And um, so I met this crazy fast Filipino feet, Jay Carrillo. And with all his sparkle and shine and the dude was just the nicest guy. Like he was just like, you know, shook my hand and he was him and a bunch of guys were going out to dinner. He's like, Hey man, why don't you come and go to dinner with us? And I learned more about him. So in the process of all that and of the match, Dylan looked at me and he goes, you know, if you want to add somebody that is really 
just a good person and, you know, really falls in line with who you are and, you know, supports the sport. He's like, Jay Carrillo is the guy. Yeah. And so I approached Jay and I was like, Hey, you know, what would you think about this? And he's like, yeah, man. And he's like, and I told him straight up, like my, this is my, this is my pitch for sponsorship back then. It's like, Hey, I'm trying to make gear that doesn't break. And I'm trying to solve problems and I want to make you some gear and I want you to tell me what's wrong with it so we can make it better. And I want to work together, you know, with the shooters to do this. That's been my whole thrux all throughout. And Jay was all about it. And mm. so we got him squared away. Um, and then, um, you know, we went from there and we've grown. Um, I got to tell you, I'm completely biased to date. I think that I have the best shooting team lineup of good people. Like, I know that's really biased, but like I would have Christmas dinner with anybody that shoots for me. Yeah. Like, no and would, it would be absolute, like the best vacation I could think yeah. of would be for all of my shooters to get together and have fun. Like those are yep. really good people. Yeah. Um, you know, well, and, and when we, and the people we've added, a lot of those people bought gear from me, Mark. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I I got that. Before we jump there, let's talk a little bit about yep. Cheyenne because she's a yep. she's an. I mean, she's a totally like in her own stratosphere in this group of people. You know, I mean, she's a right. She's a straight up Instagram influencer, and she shoots versus right. like she's a shooter who's becoming an influencer. You know, so right. how how did you get to end up hooked hooked up with her? So I met her at that shoot for the gold match. We were squ- yeah. we were squatted together, and here's her big burly dad Terry. Yeah, and it was really hot, and Terry was taking pictures and getting us, you know, helping us out. And um, I was thoroughly impressed. And this is going to sound like I have an agenda, and I don't mean it that way, but yeah. I was thoroughly impressed with Terry wasn't telling Cheyenne what to do or how to do it. Yep. she was figuring it out on her own. Yeah. And as a 13, 14 year old, I was impressed by that. I was yep. impressed at the fact that she looked me in the eye and said, hey, you know, hi, you know, Mr. Weber, my name is Cheyenne Dalton. And, you know, I'm really, thanks for shooting with us today. And, you know, it's really nice to meet you. She was well-spoken. Um, and I went to them and I said, Hey, you know, I offered her a sponsorship at the end of that day. Like I was mm-hmm. like, I, I was said, you know, um, and they had, she had a different sponsor and, um, and I went to Terry and asked Terry and he's like, well, here's the deal. Um, I want to, you know, I want to be part of the conversation, but whatever she, she says goes. Yep. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I'm not like sitting here trying to negotiate for her. Like she's learned how to, you know, she's learning how to do this. So you need to, you know, have this conversation with her. And I had an intelligent conversation with this kid <laughs> and, you know, she was like, and she told me straight up, she's like, I really appreciate the offer and I'm flattered. Um, but I currently have, you know, I currently have an obligation and until that obligation is done, um, you know, I just can't do anything. And I was like, okay, so, and I have no idea what that other obligation looked like. Right. Like I have no idea what that looked like, but I was like, okay, here's a kid that, you know, was offered something, you know, essentially for free and benefit. And she was going to stick to her guns because of her commitment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I tell you what, if you ever decide that this becomes an opportunity, you know, here's my business card, call me. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, she did. And Cheyenne is a hell of a musician. She has her own band. Um, you know, she has, I call her the gifted one because I'm not sure the girl can touch anything that doesn't turn into gold. Like she is just an amazing, you know, young lady. And it has been my privilege and joy to watch her grow up in the shooting sports. And, you know, I, I see Cheyenne Dalton being somebody that could be, you know, sit on the board at the NRA in totally. years to come, yeah. you know, got it following much in Julie Golub's, you know, footsteps. Yep. Um, and, you know, and I know that um, in years gone by, people have, you know, they have an opinion and, and I think it is easy for junior shooters to get, to get sponsorships because they get the likes on Instagram. Yeah. Sometimes these are, you know, let's be honest. 
if you post a video on Instagram, it's, it's not going to be as cool as if, you know, Cheyenne does, because here's a, here's what, you know, most people see as a, a younger girl that, you know, can't, you know, it's, it's more of a deal to them. Like they expect the average white dude to be able to do that. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, no, know, I got it. No, but like, look, uh, guy, uh, you, know, you, it, you know, you've listened to my podcast. I think that, right. you know, the female thing and the junior thing is nothing more than diversification. Yep. It's incredibly no, it effective is. diversification, but that's all it really yep. is. I mean, it's just like, you know, I mean, like, you know, the it, people and, and anybody who gets butt hurt because Cheyenne, you know, whoever got a holster from you, there's also like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. eight dudes on here, too, that are just slinging lead. Right. So, I mean, you know, it's right. not like she, you know, she took anything from you. You didn't earn no. it, period. Right. And you know what? Yeah. Cheyenne Dalton is one of the most thankful people oh, I'm like, sure. yeah. that I've ever met. She's yep. totally grateful. And, um, yeah, she's, she's now Mark, I will tell you, there are juniors out there that, that have become a little expectant yeah. in their yeah. attitude. Totally. And there's junior parents out there. Like I've been approached by them, yep. you know, Hey, my daughter is 13. She shot a, her first three game match. She, we need sponsors. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you don't understand how this works. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, my shooters work for me. So, you know, yeah. there's a contract, like my shooters, they work for me. And so they're, it's not just a, hey, you know, I'll take some free shit now. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah. you know, there's, there's expectations and no, they job. have to meet those. It's a job. Yeah. It's a job. And, and, and you know, um, it really should I, be the most expensive holster you ever buy is by being a sponsored shooter. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Totally. You know, people don't realize, people don't realize how many hours, you know, my shooters spend on Facebook and Instagram answering comments, answering, yeah. you know, messages, you know, um, and half the time I'll get messages on Facebook and Instagram and, you know, my shooters have answered them or, you know, they've, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily a direct line to me, you know, be it my customer service, uh, lady Kirsten, you know, maybe answering those and it, you know, it's not a direct line to me, but I, those shooters spend a lot of time working to earn it. And, you know, um, kids like Cheyenne are the future. And, and I told, you know, here's the other thing, like, I think while we're on the subject of juniors, the junior shooters that are listening to this or their parents, make sure you let your kids be kids. Yeah. Like, you know, there's college afterwards. And, you know, I hope that the junior shooters that do get, you know, sponsorships and do get help. I hope they understand that it hasn't always been that way. And I hope they're truly grateful for it and they earn it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of earning things in life. Yeah, for um, sure. And so, but the thing is, is like, look, if you're 17, go to your senior prom and have fun. Totally. Like, you know, skip a major to have some life events. Like, don't make it so much, you know. Um, well, look, I it, mean, it's going to be there. Yeah. The, you know? the truth. I mean, the reality of the matter is there's like, what, three dudes and one chick right now that make their living shooting three guns. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's not necessarily that great a living by itself. And so, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, uh, you know, at best an avocation, right? Right. Um, and, right. and it should be treated as such, man. This is fucking fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And like, and I, yeah, and I am seeing, I mean, look, look, in the last, one thing I have really noticed, I mean, my partner Blair over at Hawkeye Ordinance, right? I mean, he and I are both like old metalhead, old punks, right? Like, we right. bonded over like you know, the Meshuganas and Naked Ray Gun and, like, you know, uh, the Melvin. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, they're all Dead it. Kennedys, all old <laughs> punk bands from, like, the 80s, right? And, right? and so we were always like, eh, fuck those guys and their Go Fast shirts and all that stuff, you know? And, right. and at the time, like, in Wisconsin, we, you know, Blair was, like, one of the top guys, you know what I mean? And, right. and, and I was, you know, no, nobody and whatever. But anyway... And then we started, you know, that YouTube channel blew up and all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, what do we do with this? You know, like that was an accident. Right. You know, I mean, you look at those early couple of years, I was wearing a black t-shirt, you know, I mean, God, I got a funny story about that. I remember one time, <laughs> this is great. I was, I was on the, um, I was doing some sort of re a review of something. I can't remember what it was, but this guy messages me on the, through the, the YouTube and he's like, Hey, you know, you should really consider like wearing different colors because I can't see the parts, right? And I'm like, okay, well that makes mm. I'm like, that makes sense. 
great. So what do you right. think? You know, I'm like, that's awesome. Thanks for the heads up. You know, because at this time I'm working off like a, a video camera I bought at Target, you know, or whatever. Like, right. I mean, it was just nothing, you know. And then so I'm like, OK, great. That's really, really great. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Well, right. And it was like, hey, so I was looking at your eyes and I'm thinking lavender. And so I mocked up some shirts and I'm like, oh, my God, what's happening? <laughs> what's, right. What, what, I'm being taken over by the three gun beast. What is the Lord is happening? Well, yeah. So, anyway, well, yeah. Yeah. So we, we sort of transitioned to that. But what I, my point is, is that like. I wore a jersey before I should have worn a jersey. And oh yeah, I, and there's I was a lot of, and yeah. I was selling product at that time, right? And there's a lot of guys right. that are wearing jerseys that just like they really. Sh- I mean, it's kind of like it's like if it's a weird thing now. Like the jersey thing has just gotten kind of weird. Now, well, it's an ego thing. Yeah, I mean, well, let's call it what it is. Th- well, I mean, no, you know what? I will say this though: it's ego and comfort. Sure. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, they're, sure. they're damn comfortable for the game. I mean, they really are well, well of done. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Like, because I've just been wearing, like, you know, whatever, like, some level, like, high quality, like, Arcturix polos, you know? Right. Yeah, because that's the closest approximation I can get. I think this year I'm just going to get one that says just, like, follow me on Instagram on the back. And that's <laughs> it. <laughs> hashtag we are three guys. That's Ash- what's on the back of mine. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah. My, my, <laughs> yes. my hashtag. That's, uh, did you, do you like my new one, by the way? Have you seen that one? Three, uh, three gun for everyone yet? Oh, three! No, I haven't. Oh yeah, I so my that. my new my new cute hashtag is you know the numeral three gun, the numeral four, every, and then one. Nice three, three gun for everyone. Nice. Yeah, nice. if it ever takes off, no. I'll, I'll just put a bunch of hashtag three four one hats out there. It'll be like secret. Right. Code. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think there's a lot of and listen, I'm not bagging on anybody. There's a lot of you know, bless their hearts. You can say whichever, whatever you want in the South yeah. about somebody when you say bless their heart, but yeah. you know, bless these guys hearts. Like there's a lot of self-important people in three gun. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I think all of us can get to that point, you know, from time to time. And I've been him. Gotta have, I'll take responsibility. Yeah. I've been that guy. I was that guy like yeah. the last two years. Yeah. You know, and you gotta kind of be like, you know, okay, yeah, I get to do some cool stuff and some people have helped me out. And same time, like, you got to remember that it's about giving back to the sport, taking people with you, you know, dragging somebody to the first match. And the whole self-importance thing, like, there, if you think you're going to just be a brand ambassador because you have 5,000 followers on Instagram and you're going to get a paycheck, like, that's, I mean, I, I challenge you to go out to the podcast world and listen in the real world about, you know, influence or marketing when dudes are getting laughed at that only have like, you know, 50,000 followers. Yeah. Like, oh, I know. You know it, I, one the, I mean, it's, the, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, the, the top Instagram um, shooter for the top guy on, you know, using Instagram in three gun is Joshua Tarrant. Yep. He's killing it. He's yep. killing it, and then and and you could you could say Sean Burroughs too, but frankly, Sean is it's. I don't know that he grew his audience through Three Gun. It's more of that HK thing, right? Right. Um, right. But so let's just you know strictly Three Gun is is Josh Tarrant, and he's at like eleven thousand, right? right? Right. But that's an unbelievable number in our world. Yeah, and yeah, it, it doesn't is. mean shit if he stepped out of our little you know neck of the woods for right. five minutes. You'd be like, he goes right to zero, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's just so, getting into know, the game at 10,000. Some, some people, you know, they just need a reality check. Yep. You know, I've needed a reality check from time to time. And, you know, my pro staffers and my wife are really good at doing that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, know. they bring me back to, you know, my marketing guy. <laughs> He's really good at, you know, um, going, oh, have you lost weight? Because you're a little big for your britches today. Oh, um, <laughs> no. But, I, uh, I'm going to tell you right yeah, now, that, no. <laughs> that last phone call we had with the gal uh, was the most heartbreaking. I did not want to have that conversation. <laughs> so, so for those of you who don't know. You know, I mean, Weber's on the on the on the verge of some really large things happening. We'll just leave it at that, right? Okay? And right. so we're looking at like, how do we, you know, how do we figure out how do we make all the parts work? Because like, when you're a little company, you got no parts, right? Right. And then you get a little bigger, and then you got like this part and that part, and then you get a little bigger, and you're like, well, wouldn't it be interesting if this part and that part talk to each other? Right. And somewhere in there is this dollar figure that is just like astronomical. 
It's like, well, we, yeah. you know, we built the website on, on like, you know, pennies, right? And we, and we, yes. put, and we put together the shop. Brick and mortar, on, literally brick yeah. and mortar. <laughs> and we put the shop together, like, what, dollars, you know? And it's like, we got like uh-huh. pennies and dollars, and we just wanted to talk to yep. each other. And you, right. need to, you need to take out, like, you know, a jumbo loan to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, who knew that inventorying thousands and thousands of parts at a time was such a headache? So. Uh, yeah, look, hey, actually, yeah. let's put this out there because there's a lot of guys. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that are you know in the machine world that are listening that listen right. to this. If anybody out there has a really good affordable solution that they think would be interesting for how you get, you know, a kind of a complicated inventory story to work with QuickBooks and WordPress, please let us know. We'd love yes. to hear from you. You yes. can email Mark at HawkeyeSyndicate.com or info at WeberTactical.com. That would be a huge help. Yeah. And Adam will probably yeah. give you a hat or something. Yeah, a hat, a beer, <laughs> uh, <red whiskey. laughs> Um Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, God very bless. cool. Well, here's, but... here's what's up. We're at an hour and 20 minutes, and, and it's kind of my word that these don't go over an hour and a half. So I want to do this again. Absolutely. Uh, soon, because there's a lot more I wanted to talk to you about. We we haven't even gotten into Gen two or Gen three of the shooters, and and also you know you and I talked a lot about um, you know you and I have done a lot of testing of how the the influencer side of the business works too, and I want right. I want to talk about that more. But I think it was just really good to hear, get you on the show and and really like hear. I think it you know I hope people got a lot out of just hearing what the struggles of small business look like. Um, cause I think that there is a perception that some of these companies that the cottage industry companies around our game are a lot bigger than they really are. Oh yeah. You know? And yeah. so, and so I think it, I'm, I'm hoping that what got came out of this podcast was just a little bit of a right sizing, like, sure. you know, <laughs> about what you're really dealing with. I mean, I like, uh, I don't want to say any particular names, but there was a company that like you all know and love. Uh, most of you Google their equipment big time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first time I went up and saw their facility, I was like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> and that's yep. when I realized that, like, all these requests I had were, you know, were kind of a – they were a bigger deal than I thought they were when they got when they got honored. And I just wanted to put right. that out there. So, um, yeah. Adam, is always amazing to talk to you. We always, it's always too much fun. And let's just plan on doing this again in like a month or so when things are up and fully running. And, uh, and I'll, I'll just, I'll plug for you since I can. Um, the new gear is available right now and yeah. there's going to be new pictures, new listings, new verbiage and all that stuff coming out over the next couple of weeks. So the plan right now is by the Vortex Trigun. We are in full swing with the sales and marketing side of the business. And within about two to three weeks after that, the whole rest of the production changes that we're making will be complete. And Weber Tactical will be at like 110,000%. Right. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. We, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff going. Yep. Uh, we're hiring people. And uh, really excited. We partnered with the Veterans Administration. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, we've got, uh, I've actually got a few veterans that I'm interviewing on Friday. Nice. And uh, we're trying to, you know, we've got some positions that kind of work with, they've got, you know, if there's some disability there that, you know, um, that they can work around. And so we're trying to help help that. And, you know, um, we want to have fun while we're doing it and and, uh, and get good products out. Thank you so much for having me. It's oh, yeah. a joy and a privilege. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to more down the road. Yeah, we got a lot going on. So uh, WeberTactical.com, uh, WeberTactical on Instagram. And then the other thing to check out um, is Weber Tactical has been doing, there's a Weber Tactical group you can access through the Facebook page. Yeah. And and Adam, you've been pretty consistently doing a Thursday night live there with one of your shooters Correct. or somebody in the industry. So if you want to get some really cool information, I think the big plug is is go to Facebook. First, like the Facebook page and then follow the Weber Tactical Shooting Community. What's it called? Uh, Weber Tactical Competition Life. Competition Life. And on Thursday yep. nights, tune in to check out. And all those lives are, are there. They're documented. You can yep. watch the past ones. You just did a great one with Corinne Mosher. Mosher? Is it Mosher or Mosher? Mosher. Mosher. Corinne Mosher. Yep. The Shield Maiden. And, um, yep. and, uh, and who do you got coming up this week? Uh, let me jump on the calendar here. Um, I'm looking, 
I don't have that calendar in front of me. You okay, me spot I'll, too hard. I'll be there. Sorry. It'll be me. And All right, because <laughs> we'll, we'll, God knows I need more attention. And, I think uh, it's Chad Francis. Actually, Chad, oh, that'd be a really good. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah, or sure. either me or Chad Francis, one or the other. <laughs> and uh, and we'll catch up with you really soon, brother. Have a great one. Awesome. Yep. Bye, Mark.